coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Things have gotten so crushed around you. Your business has literally collapsed. God will cause people to remember you. God will cause people to call on you. God will create jobs for you. God will cause contracts to be written up just for you. God will cause people who have forgotten you for years to pick up their phones and call you. God will cause sounds to be heard by people on your behalf. Miracles still interrupt things. I'm Pastor Nkechi Ene, and welcome to my home. And thank you for letting me into your home and into your private place or wherever you are. Today, I'm really excited about what I'm here to do. I'm here to give some really good news that gives me a lot of joy. Now, before I do that, I'll tell you one fun fact about myself that should give you a hint. I love to write and I love to read. I love to write and I love to read. Yes, you guessed right. My brand new book, Dancing with Your Spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit is out and available. It's out now as an e-book, an electronic book, a digital book. You can read it on Amazon Kindle. You can get it on Akada Books. You can get it on our website. You can buy the book and read it. Dancing with your spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit. And I had the honor of having Reverend Emiko Amoshika write the foreword for the book. And you want to read what he wrote, I can tell you. And this is the book right here in my own library in iBooks right here in my own library there is dancing with your spirit that's it and the chapters are right there and you can open them up there's a forward there's the introduction section one is who is the holy spirit section two you know talks about who am i section three tells you what is a dance you keep hearing about dancing with the spirit what is a dance with him and section four tells us what happens when you dance with him this is 17 chapters of the Word of God. 17 chapters that will open your eyes into what it really means as a child of God to be led by the Holy Spirit. So come with me on this journey. Get yourself your own copy. Get it for somebody else. The e-books are available. Okada Books, Amazon Kindle, on our website. And very soon the hard copies will be made available. I'll be back here to tell you. Dancing with your spirit being led by the Holy Spirit. There is a miracle in store for you. There is something that defies all economic laws, defies all scientific laws, defies all natural laws. We still believe in miracles. Glory be to God. There is still hope. When it looks like all has failed, time has failed, people have failed, and your normal expectation of provision has failed you, there is time for you to believe God for a miracle. There is time for you to look up to the heavens. For whence cometh your help, child of God, and know that miracles still happen. Man of God, miracles still happen. People still walk up and do things that the Holy Spirit inspires them to do without you having to manipulate them or beg them or, you know, coerce them in any way. Miracles still happen. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Dew. Today on Fresh Dew, we continue our series, Another Economic System. Another Economic System. And this is part 11 of that series. So the 10 parts, if this is your first time of tuning into this series, you need to find the last 10 parts so you can catch up with what we've been learning about another economic system. Our text has been from Isaiah 55, and it reads, Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come by and eat. Yes, come, by wine and milk. 
without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be, so shall my word be, that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come of the cypress tree, and instead of the briar shall come of the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Our definitions of the word economy, the state of a country or region in terms of the production and consumption of goods and services and the supply of money. We also define economy as the administration of the material sources of an individual, community, or country, the state of these resources. Economic is defined as pertaining to or having reference to economy or to economics, capable of yielding a profit. Part A is getting to know about the system. And in 10 parts, we've got to know so much. We found out that God set up this system. It is an economic system that de-emphasizes money and sometimes even bypasses money come by without money and without price. You need a paradigm shift, child of God, to operate in this economic system. We said God set it up, and now God set it up for everyone. It's not just for the poor people or for the rich people. Everyone can, can be part of this economic system. God set it up to save you from the usual economic system. That's why he set it up, and God has made the best available in this system. We looked at abundance and excellence, we looked at, you know, we looked at oil and looked at wine and milk, rather. And we said, you know, in, in looking at milk, we found out four things about milk. Milk is nourishment. Milk is divine provision. Milk is a blessing. And we looked at the milk of favor. Now we began to look at wine. We said wine is a symbol of luxury. And we said there were, you know, before we get into luxury, there's got to be a buildup. So we're talking about, you know, the realm of abundance, the realm of, 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 of luxury. We said in part 10, I believe, before you even begin to talk about abundance, there's a realm called the realm of lack. And we took time and we looked at that. Then after the realm of lack, there are three major realms. I've tried to categorize them, and you could categorize them into four, five, whatever. But I've tried to categorize them into three major realms of abundance after you leave the realm of lack. So these three major realms of abundance are the realm of miracles, the realm of purpose, and the realm of luxury. We're talking about wine being symbolic of luxury, you know, but before we even begin to talk about luxury, we need to build up and understand from the realm of lack, what are these other realms of abundance before we even begin to talk about the realm of luxury. So it's important for us to pause, and before we jump into teaching about wine and luxury, let us look at the build-up and look at the phases of the the different realms a child of God 
can operate in. First of all, is the realm of lack, where you ought not to be. And then we move into the different realms of abundance. So the first realm of abundance we're going to look at here is the realm of, is the realm of miracles. Is the realm of miracles. And that's where you begin to you know, look at what God, let me, let me put it this way. The realm of miracles reveals to you what God can do. That's what occurs in the realm of miracles. Now, you can take this miracles to be any kind of miracles. But remember, we're teaching about another economic system. So I'm focusing on financial, material, provision, miracles. That's what we're looking at. But miracles are miracles. So let's define a miracle. A miracle, a miracle. Did I, did I ever define wine? I believe I did that, yes. I did that last time. And I defined luxury as well. Okay, good. Now, miracle is an extraordinary and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws. That is a miracle. An extraordinary and welcome. So not spooky, negative, extraordinary. It is a welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore attributed to a divine agency, a remarkable event or development that brings very welcome consequences. So when you get a financial miracle or you get a provision miracle, it's extraordinary. It makes no sense. There are no scientific or natural laws that can explain what happened, but it's a very welcome event. And you can see this was a supernatural intervention. This was by divine agency. The Bible is full of miracles about God's provision. I remember we said the realm of miracles shows you what God can do. So the realm of miracles, child of God, reveals to you the ability of God. You can't even begin to believe God for anything in your life if you don't, first of all, settle his ability and his willingness. Remember we said there are three major realms of abundance. And we're starting from the least realm. Isn't it interesting that we consider the realm of miracles the least realm? And you'll understand why in a while. So the realm of miracles shows you, it settles the ability of God. It shows you what God can do. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 tells us, and God is able. That's good news for you, child of God. God is able to provide for you. God is able to take care of you. We talked about El Shaddai, the breasted one. God is able to take care of his children. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. From the message translation, God can, he can pour out blessings in astonishing ways so that you are ready for anything and everything more than just ready to do what needs to be done. So God's lavish outpouring of his goodness and his blessing and his abundance and his provision is seen throughout the scriptures. You cannot shut your eyes to it. If you choose to, you know, believe that God doesn't provide abundantly and lavishly for his children, then you've got to actually tear out some pages in the Bible. You've got to rip out some stories because those stories scream about the ability of God to perform miracles of provision and sustenance and abundance for his people. You've got to literally delete those parts of the scriptures, which you cannot do. They speak copiously about God's ability and God's provision for his people. Let's look at one or two stories and you know, we'll start today, probably the next episode, we'll conclude this on the realm of miracles. Let's look at the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Interesting story a lot of us are familiar with. And you know, you can teach a five part, a six part series on the feeding of the 5,000. So I'm not attempting to dissect this scripture, but just a few truths that will show us some things about the realm of miracles we can find out from this, from this story. Mark 6, 35. When the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place, and already the hour is late. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. Does that sound like your condition? Does that sound like your situation? The day has been far spent. The hour is late. No hope, no help. You have nothing to eat. 
But he answered and said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? But he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in ranks, in hundreds and in fifties. And when he had taken, now this is the miracle, when he had taken the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed, and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all, two fish. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of the fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about 5,000 men. This is such a powerful story, like I said, that teaches so many truths. But something that we need to understand here about the realm of miracles is the realm of miracles is needed when all else has failed you. Somebody's watching me and time has failed you. It says here, hour, the hour was late. The day was far spent. Probably even six years without a job. Your business collapsed in this pandemic. Whatever it is, time has failed you. It says the hour was far gone. The day was far spent. The hour is late. And sometimes you look at your life, you compare yourself to those you went to school with. You make these comparisons with other people, maybe even with your siblings. You compare yourself with your younger siblings and you don't seem to have made the progress you think you ought to have made and you've been serving God. There is a miracle in store for you. Miracles come in when all else had failed. Time had failed them. The people had failed, the 5,000 men. They didn't know what to do. They came to Jesus. What do we do? How do we give? Do we just send them away? And sometimes when you need help and you think help is coming your way, the people you think are going to help you want to send you away. Just send them away. Just send them. Jesus says, no, there is a miracle in my hands. There's a miracle in store for these people. When it looks like all hope is gone, child of God, there is a miracle in store for you. There is something that defies all economic laws, defies all scientific laws, defies all natural laws. We still believe in miracles. Glory be to God. We still believe in miracles. Miracles did not end in the Acts of the Apostles. Miracles did not end in the Old Testament. There is still hope. When it looks like all has failed, time has failed, people have failed, and your normal expectation of provision has failed you. These 5,000 people, they came, 5,000 men, only men. That means there were families with them. There were more than 5,000 people. When they came, they had no food on them. So they didn't, they didn't even have provision. They came out, but they didn't come out with food. No provision had failed them. Time had gone. Nobody could help them. But then a miracle stepped in. There is time for you to believe God for a miracle. There is time for you to look up to the heavens. For whence cometh your help, child of God, and know that miracles still happen. Man of God, miracles still happen. People still walk up and do things that the Holy Spirit inspires them to do without you having to manipulate them or beg them, or you know, coerce them in any way. Miracles still happen. And if there is any news for you today, if there's any hope for you today, when all else has gone, and remember, we're talking about financial miracles, but a miracle is a miracle. So even in your body, even in your health, in your marriage, miracles still happen. And it's okay to trust God for a miracle. It's okay to understand the ability of God. God is able to make all grace. God is able to visit you in ways nobody else can visit you. God is able to turn things around for you. God is able to cause men to move for you. God is able to overturn things just for you. Why does he do that? Just because he wants to show you what he can do. That is what the realm of miracles reveals to you, what God can do. Glory be to God. So we saw that an undisputed miracle took place. When you feed 5,000 men and their families, with five loaves and two fish, it is a miracle. As a child, my, my father and the Lord used to describe a miracle in his own definition as something that will cause your eyes, your nose, your mouth, every single orifice in you 
you go, ah. When things happen and you go, ah, how can this be? And I can imagine how the 5,000 men and their families watched and they all sat down in preparation, but there was literally no food. There was no sign. And that is how a miracle occurs. That is the signature of a miracle. But there is no sign. There is no sign. Even from your doctor's report, from your bank statement, from your, your certificate, from the, what you see in the church, there is no sign. The pressure is on. The landlord is on your case. Get ready for a miracle because miracles still happen. God is able to lavish you with his goodness. Glory be to God. Another example is the four leprous men in 2 Kings chapter 7. Look at from verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time, a seer of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria to an officer on whose hand the king leaned and said the man of God. Again, this is a story you can preach 10 parts on and I've preached several times from this and said, look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? This man was doubting the ability of God. Remember, miracles reveal what God can do. And this man, this officer, somebody close to the king said, huh, are you sure God is able? Even if there were windows in heaven. And even if they opened up, can this happen? Once you begin to do that, you shut yourself out of miracles. And he said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes, or you shall not eat of it. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, listen. And they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the... Remember, there were leprous men. They were at the entrance of the gate. If we enter the city, we will die there. If we sit here at the entrance of the gate, we will die also. Therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we'll eat. We'll live, rather, maybe eat of their food. But if they kill us, we shall only die. The same dying, we will still die. So they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And there they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp. To their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused what God can do. What God can do. The Lord had caused the army of Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses. That is how God will cause things to happen supernaturally for you. The noise of a great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they rose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into our tent, one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. They came back, entered another tent, carried some from there also, and went and hid it, and so on and so forth. Look at that story. I mean, this Lord did not believe what God could do. But these four leprous men found out something, that miracles interrupt things when all hope is gone and death is inevitable. And that's a message to someone watching. Miracles step in and interrupt things when the script is death, when all hope is gone. These lepers had a script. And the end of that script was death. The first thing was the location of death was the first discussion. Are we going to die here at the entrance of the gate? Are we going to die in the city? Or are we going to die at the camp of the Syrians? All they could see was death. Death was inevitable. Sometimes it looks like death is inevitable. It is time for you to know that a miracle can interrupt that thing when death is inevitable and all hope is gone. The second thing was the type of death location of death and the type of death. Are we going to die by famine? Are we going to die by the sword? How are we going to die? The issue was not if they were going to die, but there was a miracle in store for them. The Lord had caused the enemy to hear a sound, caused the enemy to hear a sound, and they came and there was wealth all over the place. They saw everything. They had left the, tam the camp intact. Everything was littered there, and they were able to settle down and take care of their problems. And death was no longer the scripture in store for them. Child of God, there is a miracle that is in store for you. There is a miracle waiting to interrupt the inevitable death that you see. Things have gotten so bad in your finances. 
things have gotten so crushed around you. Your business has literally collapsed. God will cause people to remember you. God will cause people to call on you. God will create jobs for you. God will cause contracts to be written up just for you. God will cause people who have forgotten you for years to pick up their phones and call you. God will cause sounds to be heard by people on your behalf. Miracles still interrupt things when all hope is lost and when it seems like death is the inevitable solution. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord, for the realm of miracles. Thank you for even this is just the first realm of the realms of abundance you have in store for your children. We believe what you can do. 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 We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at TV, and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.